said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. I want to read that again. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. How many believe that? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Today I want us as we go into our worship service, I want us to be clear for all things affected by this by this uh, storm that this team is experiencing today. And I'm going to be honest, I'm shocked by it. Uh, but you know one thing I'm reminded of, I know I've talked to some people, I've been checking on some people that I know that have been affected by this storm. And one thing that I've heard them say is that we didn't expect this. We didn't see this coming. Can I tell you something? That same, that same mentality is about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> He's coming. Amen. He's coming and people are not expecting him. People are not looking for him. And I even had one person tell me, he said, we weren't prepared for this storm. Can I tell you, whether you're prepared or not, whether you're ready or not, Jesus is coming. Yes, he is. Say, well, I've heard it for years. I have too. But I can tell you this. He's coming at an hour, the Bible said, that you think not. So if you can't believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. How many believe that today? Amen. this morning. How many's glad to be in service this morning? Amen. I'm so glad we have the freedom to worship God in spirit and in truth. So y'all pray with us as we invite his presence here. Even though it's already here, we're just welcoming him in and invite him in. So Father, we come before you this morning and Lord, we just love you. We magnify you this morning, Father, and we ask that you'll just anoint everything that's said and done, Lord. Father, I pray that everything will give you glory throughout each and everything that we do. Father, I pray that you'll anoint the singing and the music, Lord. Let it touch hearts and lives. And Father, I pray that you'll touch Pastor as he brings forth the message this morning, Lord. Just have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have just some singing with us.
time you guys know I like to do this, no music. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else before a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. How many know he's great? Amen. He's greatly to be praised. You guys know this one. Sing it with us.
standing for a second. I just want to sing this chorus. Amen. Get, oh, my goodness, isn't he worthy? Amen. Isn't he worthy? Next few months are busy, so make sure you're staying in touch. 
October 12th, the ladies' brunch, 10 a.m., 10, 10, 10 30. 10, 10 30, okay? 10 30 a.m., uh, it's on a Saturday. See Miss Bridget uh, if you have any questions. Uh, and uh, I know that they will be looking forward to that. Uh, let's see here October 18th through the 19th, Pink Ladies' Conference. Our ladies' conference with the storm, it got rescheduled. So now it is the 18th and the 19th in Hickory. If you have any questions about it, you can ask Ashton, Bev, Bridget, anybody. Uh, they, they'll, they'll know, and uh, hopefully you can go since they have it rescheduled. Then on October 19th, our Stokes Forsyth District Fellowship Service at 6 p.m. That's at Parkview Church of God there in Winston. Uh, Bishop Wayne Doherty will be preaching. Uh, that's, a, uh, that, that's a Saturday night, right? Saturday night, and then October 20th, Sunday morning here, Bishop Wayne Doherty will be preaching. Now look, y'all got to understand, I wouldn't lie to you, and I'll give you a heads up if I didn't think he was a good preacher, but I've heard him preach, and he's a good preacher, so you want to make sure you're in church on Sunday. I know we are picky, and I, no shame, I'm picky of who I want to listen to, too, uh, I'll just be honest with you, uh, but he's good, he, 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 he is very good, so October 20th here, make sure you to, to hear him and be a part of that service. October 27th, the following Sunday, I told y'all that's a lot, flannel day. We have a flannel day. Everybody wears their flannels in church on Sunday morning. We love it. We have a good time. And on that evening, starting at 5, is our fall festival. Uh, I'm excited about that. I think that's my favorite thing of the whole year. You guys love fall? It's all right. No, it's all right. All right. So, yeah. So a lot of announcements. A lot. about what we're doing to help those in need from this hurricane that hit the western part of the state. Uh, Psalms 46, 1 through 7 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is our refuge and strength. You guys have seen what has happened in the western part of the state. Uh, we have talked to a bunch of pastors out there that know exactly. They're living in the middle of it. A bunch of them are living on islands. Uh, it's not good. I don't have to tell you guys that. It's not good. But we're going to do something. We are going to be the church. Now it's time to be the church, right? Get outside of these four walls and actually be who we say we are. So we shared some stuff on Facebook yesterday. If you guys didn't get to see it, some immediate needs, water, uh, diapers, cleaning supplies, toiletries, ready-to-eat meals. Baby formula is a huge need um, out there. Basically everything. I mean, those people lost everything. So if you want to give, whether it be financially, give, give, give resources, uh, meals, diapers, water, whatever. A pastor this morning said that they have a desperate, immediate need for water. Just water bottles. So whatever the case is, however you want to do this, we are prepared. Me and Ashton will be going down, taking whatever we collect up until the morning. Um, we'll be going down in the morning to take and drop that off. In Hickory, we can get to Hickory. There's a pastor there, very good friend. His, his church is acting kind of as a station to get stuff into the mountains the best that they can. So me and Ashton will be going down in the morning with the truck loaded up uh, with whatever we collect, with whatever we buy, whatever to them tomorrow. Then, throughout the rest of the week, if there's anything, maybe you can't do it today, but through the rest of the week, if you can this week, if you want to, if you can, if you are able, we're going to put a canopy up. I have a canopy out back. We'll put a canopy up on the porch, a couple boxes. If nobody is here, you can stop in, drop it in the boxes, leave it on the front porch, and then we'll make another trip uh, probably the end of this week, uh, Friday or Saturday, if we collect anything. 
give financially. If you just want to give financially on your envelopes in the back of your seat, make sure you write relief, hurricane relief, um, and, uh, and we're going to get it to them. We're going to be the church. We're going to help them. Uh, and, uh, a, lot of, a lot of bad stories coming out down there, and uh, they weren't prepared for it. They hadn't seen it in it's once in a lifetime thing. I think 1916 was the last time they saw anything remotely that close. So, uh, you guys, let's be the church. And uh, I want to pray right now. I want to pray for them. I want to pray for these needs. How many of you guys have a lost loved one? Unspoken request. So, so many needs. Our community has been affected by this. People around us, we have so many needs today. So, if you are comfortable, if you don't mind, if you will join hands with the person beside of you. Amen. And let's. Let's pray for these needs. Let's pray. Help me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus with humble hearts, God, lifting up the victims of this hurricane. Lord, you are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in times of trouble, God. We ask you to surround those affected with your divine protection, God, and your peace, Lord. Comfort the hurting, provide the needy, God, and restore what has been lost, God. Your word in Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you, God. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will withhold you with my right hand. God, may your strength flow to every person affected by this storm. Let them feel your presence and know that you are their strong tower, God. We pray for a swift recovery and restoration in their communities. God, guide the hands of those offering aid and bless them with wisdom and compassion, God. And there's a long road ahead of these people, God. Let us help them. Let us be a part. Let us be the church. Help us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, our penny march, our kids are coming at this time. forget, if you want to give to the relief, make sure you signify that on the envelope. Write it down. We appreciate all that you do. Amen. It's not in the name of Leaning Waters. It's not in the name of Cole, Kenneth. It's not in the name of you. It's in the name of Jesus that we help and we offer help to these people in Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time to give, Lord. I pray, God, that you will bless this offering in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Some of you need to remind the devil, I am blessed. I am blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I bless it, Jesus. Do you love the Lord today? Hallelujah. Let's, amen. Let's get in the word this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you again for all that you do. Amen. The Lord is good. In fact, he's great. And the Bible says he's greatly to be praised. That means if God has done anything great for you, then you ought to give him some great praise. Amen. Praise his holy, righteous, wonderful name. So last week, you know, I, I got to thinking about my sermon. I thought, man, maybe I was a little bit too hard in some of my statements I made about us Christians being hard to deal with. Um, I ain't never seen anything like it. So I'm going to try to be a little more easy today. I'm going to try to back off. But I, I am going with the same, the same uh, theme as last week, the value of salt, part two. Last week we went out of Matthew 5 and 13. Today we're going out of Mark chapter 9 and verse 50. Mark chapter 9 and verse 50. I hope I can do this sermon justice today. I have so many notes that uh, you're just going to have to bear with me. Somebody said I preached 50 minutes last week. Every week I try to narrow this thing down. It doesn't work. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, <laughs> but hallelujah, I enjoy preaching. But in Mark 9 and verse 50, here's what he said. Salt is good. Salt is good. I just wonder, is there anybody here you like salt? So when you eat stuff, I mean, how many of you got to have about a jar of salt? I mean, I've seen some people put the stuff on. I'm thinking, man, high blood pressure is coming your way with all that salt you're doing. But if the salt have lost his saltness, where with ye will ye season it? What's it, what he says here? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Have salt. You can be seated. Salt, I talked a few, a little bit about it last week. I want to hit it, number one, today with salt is a preservative. Can I tell you this morning that we as Christians are to preserve the word of God we're to hide the word in our hearts. We're to preserve the truth. And God's word is true and we're to uphold the word of God. Salt for thousands of years, thousands of years has been effective in uh, prohibiting the growth of bacteria, yeast, and mold that causes food spoilage. As I, as I broke down exactly what salt does, it's as if the Lord was just speaking to me about how this works in our life. You see, when Jesus used the, the, the analogy, if you will, of salt, he had reasons as to why he wasn't just talking about being salt. He had reasons for wanting us to be like salt. In fact, when I looked at salt, it draws out moisture from food and creates an environment, watch this, that is inhospitable for, for microorganisms. In fact, by reducing the water content in food, bacteria and fungi, that nasty looking stuff, mm, which is requires moisture to grow, it's like, less likely to thrive. You know, I thought about that. So if it preserves food by reducing the water content, that makes it inhospitable for bacteria, 
and fungi and stuff like that to grow, I thought about it like this. If it works for food and Jesus tells us to be like salt, then what he's saying is, is that we ought to be so full of the word, so full of his presence to where that sin, a bacteria, hello somebody, a cancer of the soul won't have any room to grow. I wish somebody would help me. It, it's a curator. It dries and cures meats. It creates a more acidic or a basic environment which makes it harder for spoilage causing bacteria to survive. I'm going somewhere. Just look at your name and say, bear with him. Bear with him. Bear with him so that salt doesn't become spoiled. I want to go with that just a minute because I thought about that. And when I thought about that, I thought about health benefits of salt. I told you last week that according to some, it depends on which medical uh, uh, social media site that you go to uh, as to regarding salt, but here's what they said about uh, sodium deficiency. In other words, if you don't have enough salt, and when I thought about this, I thought about, you know, that describes... It, well, it describes the church. It, it describes us as Christians because watch what happens when we have a salt deficiency. It may result, it may result in fatigue, dizziness, watch this, confusion, seizures, headaches. But watch this. This is the one that got me, David, irritability. I'm going to hit something here. I'm going to try to really be nice, Sister Styers, because I hit it so hard last week and talked about how we as Christians are so hard to deal with. But I thought about that word when I, when a sodium, if you don't have enough salt in your body, it makes you irritable. Well, that's going to be my excuse the next time that my wife gets on me. I've got the perfect excuse now. But watch this. So sodium, a sodium deficiency causes us to be irritable, and I'm likening it to the, the, the spiritual side of us. You know, we, 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 we walk around as Christians, and we're some of the most miserable people I, I've ever in my life imagined. Don't ask them how they're doing. You will get a book. And they'll tell you everything that's wrong with everybody else and, 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 and they'll tell you everything that's wrong in the church and they'll tell you everything that's bad in the church and they'll tell you how bad the preacher is. I'm preaching. I just wish somebody would help me. Everything's bad and everything is it's just, it's just terrible. And I can't help but believe that if it's always everybody else, then... It can't always be everybody else. There must be a common denominator. And I can't help but wonder that as the church, we've, we've become cold and indifferent and saltless and, 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 and we're, and, and we're we've, we've allowed the things. Now watch this. What, one thing that hinders or, or makes salt bad is that what's on the outside gets on the inside. And so what we're doing is we're allowing all of the problems in the church to get on the inside of us. Because here's the deal. Last time I checked, there is no perfect church. And if we're there, then it's no longer perfect. Hello, somebody. So, but you know what helps us to maintain our salt content is doing the spiritual disciplines that we can read about in the Word of God, which is Bible study. If you don't ever pick up the word of God and you don't ever read the word of God and you don't ever allow the word of God to get on the inside like David said, he said, thy word that I've hid in my heart. 
Why? That I might not sin. There's that fungi, that cancer, that 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 microorganism called sin. That it, he said it will. He said if if I hide it in my heart, I won't sin against you. Most people amaze me that call themselves a Christian. I, here I go. I'm gonna get on another soapbox. But this is hard. This is on me. It's on me. Is that most most Christians don't even know what the word says. Folks, can I tell you something just like this storm that just hit? And I've talked to people and I said, we weren't prepared. We weren't this. We weren't that. What makes us prepared for the coming of the Lord is staying in the word. What makes us prepared for the coming of the Lord is praying every day and seeking the face of God, meditating on the word. You know, that, that's another spiritual discipline. It's when we get in our prayer closet and we say, God, you know what? I'm not going to talk right now. I just need to concentrate on you. I need to meditate on you. I need the word to get on the inside of me. I need your presence to get on the inside of me. And I need you to speak to me. Oh my. See, we go to God in prayer and we give out all this Christmas list. And when we're done, we say, okay, thank you, Lord. I'm done. Bye. See you. And we never give God an opportunity to speak to us. Talking about salt. Ain't no wonder we got so many Christians that are hard to deal with. Oh, help me, Jesus. I talk to people all the time. They say, blah, 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 blah. I said, that's not in the word. And they look at me like I'm half crazy. And I'm talking about people that's been in church all their life. But you know what they've, God help me. But you know what they've done is they've took what everybody else has said and they've not looked it up for themselves. I had no intentions of going here. Help me, Jesus. Irritability. Irritability. Let me see. Let me see some other things that I that I had had down here because it is uh, it, it, you know salt is good, and Jesus knew that salt is a preservative, and what preserves us, what helps us to stay in tune with God, what helps us in our walk with Him, is to read our Bibles. You know, it's like this. I've got an office at the house and I've got four shelves that almost line the entire wall. And I've got books on top of books on top of books on top of books. But what good is those books? If I don't ever pick them up. I might have them, but if I never read them, then what good are they to me? What good is the word of God if we don't ever pick it up? But salt is a preservative. This word helps to preserve us in one sense. Prayer, staying in the presence of God, preserves us to an extent. Are you listening? Every day that Adam and Eve were in the garden, who come and walked with them? God. Every day, Sister Brim, every single day God came in the cool of the day and walked with Adam and Eve. So if they needed it, who are we that we should not need that? Oh, help me. Okay. Let me move on. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to get too far out here. Number two, something I thought was pretty interesting is that salt, in a large quantity, can smother a small flame. Now it's not going to put out a fire, a big old house fire. 
Ooh, I'm about to preach. But what salt in large quantities can do is smother out small flames, watch this, by cutting off the oxygen. If we're the salt of the earth, like Jesus said, then we can help put out fires that the enemy starts. In other words, when people come to you with pure gossip, to try to stop, a, to start a small fire, salt will turn a deaf ear to it. God, I wish somebody helped me. In other words, salt will say to gossip, listen, I don't want to hear that. And if you've got an issue with so-and-so, then you go speak to them. So if we're the salt of the earth, and Jesus said to be the salt, Salt will put out these small little fires that the enemy keeps wanting to stir up. Are you with me? Did you hear? No. I've had people recently come to me about stuff. Now, there's nothing here, mind you, so I don't even want you to start going there. I wonder what he's talking about. They say, what happened with, and they'll name it. I said, look. I don't know, don't care to know, glad I don't know, but you're on that board. I said, what does that matter? Had somebody in a group text just this week. I got put, I, yeah, I get put in them all the time. I'm going to change my number one of these days. And I'm going to be selective who I give it to. I heard, and there they went. You know what I did? I said, praying for you. That's all I said. I'm not going to entertain that stuff. I, I don't have time for it. Then another brother come on there and he said, well, brother, said I don't have no idea what you're talking about. And there he went and explained. He said, but I'm praying for you. Here come another brother on there on that same group text and said, you know what, I agree, I, I don't have an idea as what you're talking about and what it was they had heard that some of us was talking about them. This is not to be ugly, please. I am busy and I don't have time to be in everybody's business. Boy, I can't believe I'm doing all this today. Help me, Jesus, I tell you. Lord, help me. So if salt in large quantities can put out a small flame, that's not going to put out a big fire, but a small flame, then if we're the salt of the earth, then when, 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 when people start that, then we can help put it out. Because I can tell you that's not God's will. To go around and run everybody down. It's not God's will. But then I thought about salt as a softener. You know, they have uh, what they call these uh, water softening kits that you can put in your house to soften the water. I thought, what in the world? Years ago, I thought, why would you need salt and a, and a water softener in your house? Is water really hard? When I think of water, I don't think of it being hard. Hello. When I think of when I think of hard, I think of something that can't move, right? Well, water moves, right? But a water softening kit helps to soften, condition the water hardness. And the purpose of these systems is to remove or to reduce the hardness of the water that is typically caused by the presence of minerals such as calcium and magnesium. So when I thought about this, us being salt, I think through the, through the years, we as Christians if we're not careful, can become hard. We've been through so much stuff and the 
church has been through so much stuff and we've heard so much stuff and, and we become hard and callous and uncaring. I'm, I'm preaching. I wish you'd help me. We become rough. And then we get this attitude and all of that that bless God. You ought to just be thankful I'm here. And then we get to the point, and I don't know why I'm saying all this because it's not in my notes, but I'm going to run with it. We get to the point where we think the church can't function unless it's run through us. My goodness, I need to preach on heaven next week. I, you're going to think I'm a hard preacher. But that salt, that constant spending time in the presence of God, that constant reading his word, that constant, you know, being in a position to where we can hear from God when we meditate David said, I will meditate on the Lord. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what he was saying in several references. In fact, in one scripture, the Bible says, I will meditate on him day and night. That means I don't have time to be involved in this, that, or the other, and all this stuff that distracts me in my walk with God. But I've got to hear from him. And when we do that, it keeps us soft. It keeps us from becoming hard and callous. To where everybody in the, in the, in the church, everybody in the community knows, well, they're Christian, but boy, they're a booger to deal with. Help me, Jesus. If they throw me out, Lord, I'm going to need you to help me. But, but, the, but the salt helps to keep us soft to where we're still a caring people. We're still a loving people. Aren't that, isn't that what we're supposed to be? He, Jesus said out of all this stuff, charity, is the main thing. Love is the main thing. Well, isn't that what we've been called to do is to love our neighbor as ourself? Now, we love ourselves, don't we? <laughs> We're going to look after ourselves. Hello, somebody. And ain't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with looking good, looking your best, taking care of yourself. Buying a Cadillac. That's what I keep telling myself. It's a joke. I'm trying to get some of y'all smile at me. Nothing wrong with that stuff. But, listen, we're supposed to love everybody. That means that we... We enjoy being with people. God has not called us to be a recluse either. That means that we got to rub elbows with those around us and yet we can still be the salt while rubbing elbows. You know, hallelujah, the salt loses its saltness. How can you make it salty again? Jesus is talking here in this, in this larger, this part of a larger discourse, Jesus speaks about sin earlier, stumbling blocks and living as his disciples. You see, the significance of salt in the ancient world was preservation, flavor, and purification. Jesus uses the metaphor of salt here 
to highlight how that believers should live distinctively in this world. We are in this world. There's nothing, listen, until the Lord calls us home, we are in this world and we need to bring some flavor to those around us. We need to preserve the word. Can I tell you the world is trying now to water down the gospel. The church is trying to water down the gospel. Everybody's trying to water it down and say, well, the Bible doesn't really mean that and the Bible doesn't really say that. Can I tell you, I believe every word in this book is right. I believe every book, every chapter, every letter, every verse, every word in this book is the ultimate authority and the word of God. And therefore, we are to we are to preserve the word. They're trying to water it down, do away with it. I can still love you. I don't have to approve what you do. My blessed. And all because I don't approve of what you do does not mean, and you may not approve of some of what I do, as far as that goes. But we'll let God sort it out. Right? But I'm still going to tell you the truth. Sin is sin. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. Heaven is real. Hell is hot. And if we're not ready to meet him, we're going to be in a world of trouble. So my question to you is, how are we preserving the teachings of Jesus in our lives and our communities? Do you sit down with your, your family and read the Bible? Do you, do you pray with your family? Do you? I mean, what, what do you do to help preserve in not only your family but even in the, co the community? And as flavor, salt makes things better. They just taste better. Eat some green beans with no salt. So look, I got people shaking their head now. It's terrible, ain't it? Woo! I said, my God. And I'm trying not to eat no salt. I'm on three blood pressures a day. One I take twice a day. Cholesterol medicine. I don't look it, I know. Thank you. <laughs> so I try to stay away from salt. But man, it's not the same. You put just a little salt on them green beans and now we're talking. Can I tell you we're supposed to be the same in this world? Flavor. Amen. More enjoyable. I don't believe God has called us to be hard-nosed. We're to bring flavor. We're to bring love, right? We're to bring joy. Where is our joy? Joy is not happiness. That's not the same thing. Happiness can be given and can be taken. Amen. If I get a brand new Cadillac, I'm happy. Right? Leather seats. Praise God. I feel this thing now. Not only heated seats, but air-conditioned seats. That's what I'm talking about. I sat in somebody's uh, uh, Cadillac here a while back, and they turned the AC on. I, whoo! <laughs> Praise God. But joy, joy is that resolve. That means I can still be glad when things are going wrong around me. Because it's not in the things around me. My joy is in Christ. My joy is in him. He has set me free. Hallelujah. Goodbye to sin and things that confound. Not of this world shall turn me around, right? My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's something to be joyous about. 
Because I can tell you, as I, as I preached a few weeks ago, there are no unbelievers in hell. I got I to gotta hurry. I got to hurry. So are we living our lives that draw others to the gospel? By our joy and by our witness? The danger of losing salt, the saltiness, it's no longer useful. If believers lose their distinctive witness, they become ineffective. When Christians blend into the world, their influence and their testimony weaken. God has not, God has not called us to blend in. He's called us to stand out. And with that is the salt. He said, have salt among yourselves. In other words, we're to remain faithful to the call. We're to be a great commissioning people. That means that we reach out no matter who they are, where they've been, what they've done, what they look like, what they smell like, we're still to be salt. He said, be at peace with each other. I got to quit, but he said, be at peace with each other. Salt symbolizes peace and covenant. Jesus concludes with a call for believers to live in peace and to live in unity. So the application here is how do we actively pursue peace? How do we pursue peace in our relationships? How do we pursue peace with others in the church and beyond? Are we quick, watch this, to reconcile and for, forgive? Some people are Hard as I talked about a minute ago because they've allowed all this other stuff to get on the inside of them and it's created a hardness and, and a bitterness and, and, and the sad thing about it is they don't even see it. Jesus says remain salty. Be quick to reconcile. Be quick to forgive. That's like when, when my wife and I, for those of you that are married, get into a, a disagreement, she'll tell you I'm the first one to apologize. I don't like that stuff. We ought not like that stuff, even as Christians. We don't like people, watch this, we don't like people because of what others have said. We may not even know the person, but because so-and-so said something, now we don't like them. And we make it our personal mission to try to make that person look terrible. Is that the will of God? Well, I'm going to get even. Bless God. Do you know what they did to me? That's all right. I can act like that too. God doesn't want us like that. He wants us to be quick to forgive. Have some salt. Salt brings peace. Salt brings reconciliation and forgiveness. So remain salty today. I know that sounds odd, but remain salty. Encourage yourself to reflect on how you can maintain your distinctiveness and your spiritual saltiness. Don't be focused on everybody else, but focus on yourself. Pursue peace. Per pursue peace. The Bible says, if it be possible, you know, live peaceably with all men. All men. And then I want to ask you today that 
whatever areas in your life that you're in danger of losing your saltiness, how can you fix that? How can you restore that? See, it's for flavor. It's for preserving. It's for health. I didn't know this, but salt helps to maintain fluid balance, nerve function, and muscle contractions in your body. In fact, it's important for your thyroid function. Health remedies, sore throat. How many has ever remember, remember hearing that if you gargle with what? Warm salt. It didn't say sugar water. <laughs> right? It didn't say gargle with vinegar. How nasty would that be? But it helps to soothe the sore throat. So let's take it like this and I'm, I'm done. If it can help a sore throat physically, then when Jesus asks us to be salt, how much healing can we bring to those around us? No, I can't do that. I can't heal anybody. But if I'm who I'm supposed to be in Christ, and he says, you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Your lips, if you're full of salt and you're full of the spirit and you're full of the word, then when you speak to people, you can bring healing. Oh, yeah. A soft answer, Proverbs said, turns away what? Wrath. But grievous words, what did he say? Stir up anger. So we can, we can even bring health, salty health, by what we say. Would you stand with me? I don't know how good a job I've done today. by trying to relate to you what I believe God has given. I had a whole list full of stuff. But we know that salt brings flavor. It brings preserve, preservation. It'll put out some small fires in large quantities. And it reduces the hardness So you know what I believe the church needs today? You know what I believe we need is more spiritual salt. More spiritual salt. God wants us to bring healing. Not division. Not being ugly to everybody. He wants us to get along. And he wants us to, to love everybody. And to bring unity to the body. And being salt will help us do that. With every head bowed, every eye closed, and the saints of God praying. If you're in this place today and you need anything from God. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, man, I've lost some saltiness. I, I've become hard. I, 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 I've, I've, I've lost flavor. I, I'm so disgusted. And I've let too much get on the inside of me. For now, it's affected my relationship with the Lord Jesus. I need the Lord to touch me today because I can't do this anymore. I can't continue to let the stuff get on the inside because it's not good for me. I don't want to be a hard person. I don't want to be somebody that's known as a gossip, as a stirrer up. So I need the Lord to touch me. I want to become salt again. I want to become flavorful. 
I need some preservation in my life. I need the working of the Spirit in my life. So, I need the Lord to touch me. Or if that's you, I'd love to pray with you. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm just here to help you. I'm here to pray with you. I'm here to believe God with you. I'm here to believe God for you. I know that he's able to touch you today. Is there anybody in this place today? You say, Pastor, I, I need the Lord to touch me today. I need the Lord to touch me. I need the Lord to touch me. All right, how many is out there while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed and say, Pastor, I need, I need prayer today. Would you just pray for me this week? Would you, would you pray for me today? Yes, there's, yes, there's several hands. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I see them. I see them. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you see every hand that was raised. God, today. I don't know what they have need of, nor is it my business, but God, I'm asking you to touch them. I'm asking you, God, to reach down to them today and to do what only you can do. I'm asking for your hand, Lord, to be upon their life in a fresh new way. God, Lord, to just move upon their life to bless them and to keep them. Father, I pray for all of your people in this place today. And even some that may be watching my social media, God, I'm asking you today, God, to touch them. I pray, Lord, that you will bless your people today. Lord, that you will keep your people. Lord, that your face will shine upon them and that you will bless them today. Lord, we love and appreciate everyone in this place, God, and even those that were not here today. And I'm asking you, God, Lord, in this time, in this season, in this place that we're at in the world, that you will minister unto your people, that you will meet their needs and touch them, oh God, God, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, you'll help them, Lord, to be the salt of this earth, the salt of the world. Lord, if any have lost their saltiness, God, help us, Lord, to regain that saltiness today. Lord, I just ask you, God, Lord, to help us to be the light that is needed in this world. I pray that you'll touch. Now, will you do me a favor? We, I keep forgetting this, but we have this box right here behind me that's full of prayer requests. And will you stretch your hand this way? Will you pray right now for every need, every request in this box? Father, I'm asking you right now. God, you see every need in this box. Every person God, in the name of Jesus, every situation, every circumstance, God, that's represented, Lord, in this dear box, and I'm asking you, God, to touch every need today. Lord, we know there is nothing impossible with you, for with you all things are possible. And regardless of the need, regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstance, I'm asking you, God, right now, God, to meet the need. God, touch the person. Touch the situation. Touch the circumstance. Because, Lord, there is nothing hard, nothing impossible with you. And, God, I'm asking you to meet every need today right here in this box and even in this congregation. And, Lord, once again, before we completely dismiss, I ask you, Lord, to meet every need, God, of the people, Lord, that's been affected by this sin this uh, storm. Lord, I've read reports, I've, I've seen reports, God heard reports that it may be weeks before they get some power back. And 
I'm asking you, God, Lord, to strengthen people, to touch people. God, to reveal yourself, make yourself known. I pray, God, that, Lord, people who may not even know you, Lord, that they'll call upon you. For, Lord, you said, they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I ask you to do that, God. I ask you to do that great work today to meet every need, God. Lord, we love you. Will you just slip up your hand right now? Will you thank him? Will you praise him right now? If you believe in God for something, just give him praise and say, Lord, I'm just thanking you right now. I'm thanking you, Lord, that the answer is on the way. I'm thanking you, Lord, that the answer is coming. Lord, that you're going to meet the need. God, that you're going to touch my of my loved ones and you're going to touch me oh with the power of God Lord I thank you my lost loved ones are coming to Christ I thank you Lord that they're coming into the fold God I just praise you I glorify you I just magnify you come on lift him up in this place he's worthy of all praise he's worthy of all praise he's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. need any special prayer today. Maybe you're going through some stuff and you're just you're just wore out. 
I need a fresh touch. Is there anybody in this place? I know this is whatever here, but I, I just, is there anybody you need anything, anything from God? Anything at all from God? I believe he is here to meet your need. I believe that. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing that one more time. Hallelujah. If nobody comes, we'll dismiss. If, if you want a prayer, I'll be happy to pray with you. Let's sing it. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Oh yes. Then sings my soul. That's great. So four hundred and fifty dollars. Five hundred and fifty dollars. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Church, you do a great job. I appreciate you today. I appreciate all that you do. Amen. I want us to continue to remember those that's been affected by this storm. Amen. It's going to be a weeks, weeks, and weeks. In fact, I think there's one place there off of 40 uh, below Whittier washed out. And they said that road off I-40 is closed indefinite. Don't even know when they're going to get it back open. So um, let's pray for them. Let's pray that God will continue to touch and strengthen them. I've seen reports of people losing their, you know, family members, losing their pets and things of that nature. It's horrendous. And then their homes, their cars, their stuff. I don't know about you, but that's tough. That's tough. And uh, so let's pray that God will continue to touch them. I love you. I appreciate you. Make sure you get a bulletin to keep up with all things living waters. I love you. God bless. Real quick, I just wanted to uh, invite y'all tonight uh, to the Reedsville Church of God. Um, I'm doing the district service for them. Um, I would appreciate all who can come. It's my first district service. There's going to be about five other churches represented. Um, I think it's 410 Thomas Street um, at the Reedsville Church of God. So if y'all can join me, I would appreciate all the support. Thank you.